Hi, welcome to your lesson on applied functions. We've already talked about functions uh, as being something like a machine, where you have an input that goes into the machine and an output comes out. We can see here, uh, one function machine, we have inputs going in and outputs coming out. So what do you think the equation is that represents this function? Hopefully you came up with 2x plus 1, and we can clearly say here, 2 times the input number plus 1, 2 times the input number plus 1, and so on. So 2 times the input plus 1 gives you the output y. Okay, here's another problem that really focuses on the, a function as a machine. So we have a computer program that asks you for any word and returns the number of letters in that word. So your inputs go in here and it's words and outputs come out here. So again, the inputs is a word and the output is the number of letters in that word. Question A says, justify why this program is a function. Look at question A. It says justify why this will be a function. Hopefully you came up with something like this. Uh, for every input, which is a word, there's only one output number of letters. All right, A specific word can only have a specific number of letters. So one input leads to one output, and that is the definition of a function. Okay, so now write down uh, what this program does in function notation. So that could be something like this. P being the program, it says use P for program. P program, the input word, so P of word, all right, that's the input, and it gives you, the function gives you the number of letters. Okay, so now evaluate P of horse, P of Mississippi, and P of high. Think about what this function is doing and what would those answers be. Let's check, P of horse, Mississippi, and high, well that's five because horse is your input, the output is the number of letters, five. Mississippi has 11 letters, so our output is 11, and high has two letters, therefore output two letters. Great. How about this? Find x such that p of x equals 3 or p of x equals 8. What could x be here and what could x be here? This one's a little strange because we don't usually, we usually think of functions as equations, but this one, well, p of x means that some word goes in and we get three letters. So there are endless possibilities. I put cat because you input the word cat, you get three letters out. All right, you could have put any other word that has three letters. And the same for p of x equals eight. Um, how about this one? So that one, I'll just, I'll leave p of x equals eight up to you, any eight letter word. How about e, p of three? Well, this one's kind of strange. Oh, you're thinking three, well, that's a number, but it's actually a word, three. Three goes in, and therefore we get five comes out because there's five letters in that word. And finally, for what numbers, 0 to 10, does p of x equal x? Okay, so now, what numbers can you input here? Just like we did 3 here, what numbers in written form as you write them out? What numbers as you write them out could you put there and get the same number here? All right, where x is between 0 and 10. Well, the only one that works is p of 4. So I put in 4 in here, and the output is 4 because there's 4 letters in the written form of the number four. No other number has the same number of letters as, as the number it represents, all right? So think about that one. Okay, now we're gonna look at three questions where you're gonna follow these steps in each question. You're gonna write a function to represent the situation. Then you're gonna define a domain and range. Domain and range uh, are up to interpretation, so you'll see how that works in this one. Let's look at the first one as an example. So please read this situation and see if you can write a function using f for fee charged by the carpenter and h for the input which is the hours so what function could we use for this situation okay let's check that work uh, we know that the fee that the carpenter charges depends on time that the carpenter works so therefore we can have a fee based on hours which is the input so this is how we write the function f of h fee based on hours of work and we know that he charges 40 just for doing the job, and then 30 for every hour worked. So this is a simple linear rule for this situation. $40, sorry, 40, yeah, 40 euro plus 30 euro for every hour worked. So now an example of that would be if the carpenter works for five hours, we could write f of five means the input of five hours into the function here. And then we have the input here as well, because h, both h's are replaced by 5, and that works out to 190 euro. So we can write f of 5 equals 190. So the fee, based on 5 hours of work, is 190 euros. So that's how functions work, right? Okay, so b, define the domain and range. Well, let's talk about it this way. Uh, for domain, what is uh, domain is your input, the hours, right? So what is the reasonable amount of hours a carpenter can work in the day? 
Well, I decided on a domain of h, so the hours, such that h is between 1 and 8. <clears throat> okay, and I should have had actually an equal sign there. Maybe I'll change that now. Okay, so I made that change. So now this says that the hours, the input in this function, is hours between 1, including 1, and up to 8, including 8. So basically like an 8-hour workday. So the carpenters, the inputs for this formula are that. And the domain and range can, is up to interpretation. Everybody can have a different answer. As long as you can justify your answer based on this real-life situation, I chose this domain. I think that makes sense to me, that the carpenter works from 1 to 8 hours, and that's uh, what H can be. All right, any inputs uh, below that or negative numbers, for example, wouldn't work uh, or numbers greater than eight. I'm assuming this is for one day, so they're not going to work more than eight hours, but you could have had a different domain. OK, so based on domain, though, however, once you select a domain and you justify that it makes sense in the situation, uh, you can choose to get the range from the domain, right? Because now that you've set up the domain, the range comes from that. Basically, what you do is you take your lower and upper number in your domain, put it into your function, and then you get your lower and upper in the range. So if I put 1 into this function, so 1 goes in here, I would get a fee of 70. So the range is 70 on the low end, because for one hour of work, it's 70 euro. And then for eight hours of work, so if you put an 8 in here, 8 times 30 is 240 plus 40, 280 for an eight hour workday. So the range comes directly from the domain. So that's the steps. Begin with the domain, justify it, and then find the range based on those domain values. And there's our range then. That's the fee for a, a day of work from one hour to eight hours. There's all the possible fees. Okay, let's try another one. This one here is read this and see if you can make a function. Okay, let's check that. So first of all, we know that the amount of water in the bathtub depends on time in minutes, and the water level is going down. So my function, I'm putting W for amount of water based on minutes, all right? So amount of water begins at 120 liters, and then you subtract 25 liters every minute because it drains that much every minute. So it's going down by 25 times the number of minutes that have passed. Again, it's a simple linear function. And now, what do you think a reasonable domain for this one is? Okay, I, oh, I, I gave an example here as well. So let's say three minutes pass, then we write W of three, so amount of water based on three minutes of input, and then the amount of water is 120 minus that, which is 45 liters remaining. <laughs> and we write uh, water based on input of three equals 45. Okay, so I thought a reasonable domain for this one was uh, between 0 and 4.8. So why 4.8? Well, first of all, domain represents the input values, right? And in this case, our input is the minutes of time that has passed. So minutes such that minutes are between 0 and 4.8. I chose 0 and 4.8 because 0 <coughs> represents uh, when no time has passed, right? So the bathtub can be still full, 120 liters, if there's no time that passed. And then 4.8, I chose that because I know <clears throat> 120 divided by 25 is 4.8. So to get the bathtub to go from full to empty is you do 120 liters divided by 25 liters and you find out it takes 4.8 minutes to get this to be drained completely. So that's why I made that the upper limit of our domain. Numbers beyond that don't make sense because the bathtub is already empty. Okay, so based on that domain, you get our range. So if you plug in zero into this function, you find out that there's still 120 liters of water. That makes sense. If you plug in 4.8 into this function here, you get 120 minus 120, which is zero. So our water level can be from 120 to zero. Or I guess I should have written that in the other, other order, right? Zero to 120. But basically, that comes from our domain. Okay, try one more like this. Okay, read that and see if you can make a function. This one's going to be a little trickier. Okay, this one looks like this. Uh, we know the cost of the land you're buying depends on the size you buy by square meter. So I wrote a function like this. The cost of the land you're buying based on the number of square meters. And it's like this. Because we know that it's $200 per square meter. So here's $200 times the number of square meters. But there's also a tax. So the way a tax works is an additional amount you pay, right? So I took the amount you pay for the land and I multiplied it by 1.15 because that means times 1 it would be like keeping it the same, right? If you do 200s times 1, it just stays the same. And then you have an additional 15%, so that's 0.15. So I'm multiplying 200s, the total cost of the land, by 115%. That's what this represents because you're paying 
and an extra 15% in tax. So 1.15 times the cost. All right, so an example of that would be if you bought 4,000 4, square meters, you put 4,000 as your input and you get this in your function. The result is $92,000 for that. That's including the tax, right? Because it would be 200 times 4,000 would be 80,000 and then the tax added on brings it up to 92,000. Okay, in this one, the domain is really up to interpretation. Like in the carpenter problem and then the water in the bathtub problem, the domain, we can disagree on the domain, but at least it was kind of, our answers would be the same. Here, the domain can be so many different things. I chose a domain like this. So I said domain where the square meters of the land is between 1,000 and 50,000. So based on my own experience of looking at land and looking to buy land, I know a 1,000 square meter plot is pretty small and you won't find anything smaller than that. And then 50,000 is a pretty big one. Maybe it's unlikely to find something bigger than that. Of course, you might have a different opinion and you might think, yeah, of course they can find bigger land plots than that, but that's my domain. So based on whatever domain you selected, then you get the range, right? Because the process is to look at the domain and then the range comes from that. So if we take a thousand, and put it into our function, it produces a value of 230,000. So for my range, I'm saying that's the low, low cost of land. And then the high cost, well, if I'm saying the upper limit for how much land you can buy is this, and you put that 50,000 into the function, you get a cost of 11 and a half million. So that's the upper end for mine. So my domain produces my range. And of course, these are up to interpretation. Okay, let's look at another one. Uh, this one, read this. It's about car insurance and see if you can make a function for answering question A. Okay, the function should look like this. We know the cost of insurance is based on age. So C, C of A, cost based on age. And we, we know it begins with 24,000 minus 1,000 times the age. Okay, so what does C of 18 represent and what is C of 18? What's the value? Okay, C of 18 represents the cost of insurance for a male aged 18. And then if you calculate it, you put 18 in here. So 24,000 minus 1,000 times 18, which is 18,000. That means uh, 6,000 is C of 18. And the question here is, is this then, uh, is this a function? Is this thing that we have here a function for males under 18? Yeah, it definitely is because every time you have an input, which is age, you get a different output, a different cost of insurance. Every different input produces a different output. Okay, next question. Do you think this is fair? Is it fair to charge uh, different insurance rates based on age? All right, I answered, well, of course, answers will vary, but I answered, yeah, I think it is. Basically, what happens here is younger drivers pay a higher insurance. For example, 18-year-olds we saw pay 6,000. If you put 20 into our function, it would be 4,000. So as the age goes up, the insurance goes down because you're subtracting a bigger amount from the 24,000, right? So basically, younger people pay more. And this is fair, I think, because statistically, younger drivers are more likely to get into accidents. So they should pay more insurance. And suggest a reason in E why this function is only valid for drivers under the age of 24. Well, here's what happens when you put 24 into the function. If you put 24 into our function, you get 24,000 minus 24,000 is zero. So 24-year-old, according to this function, would pay no insurance. And that's not accurate. So that means the domain of this function must be A values 23 or lower, right? It can't have A values greater. So the function only applies up to the age of 23, because after that makes no sense. So that's what I put in the next point here, that for A values greater than 23, the cost of insurance is zero or less, and that makes no sense. So the function has a limited domain. That's the whole part, uh, thing about domain when we have real life situations. Okay, try this one out. Okay, the function should look like this. And in part B, we're told the total cost is 1150. So we know this cost side of the function is gonna be 1150. We're told that the cost based on movies is 1150. So we re replace that C of M by 1150 here, and then we solve our equation to figure out, well, how many movies lead to that cost, and it's 17. Okay, one more, try this one out. Okay, this one's a little strange. Uh, it's interesting situation. We have for every input, the floor number, there's only one output, the average number of stops the elevator makes. So it's definitely a function. Now, what is the largest possible domain of T of N? Okay, here's what I put, and you might have something a little different, but I said the domain, the uh, number of floors is an integer, the Z means integer, it's an integer between negative three and eight. Negative three meaning three floors underground, and up to eight because the ground floor is zero, and then we have eight more floors above it. So there's our domain. 
here's answering question c and d.